Welcome to Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm Sam Dunning, a digital marketing, sales, and business growth evangelist. Tune in and subscribe today as I'll be interviewing business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. You'll be learning their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your own business. Welcome back to the show. I'm delighted to have joining me today Richard Smith. Richard is the co-founder and head of sales at Refract. He has 10, over 10 years of experience working in sales, working for building highly active and scalable outbound software sales teams. Richard has been a regular contributor um, for leading sales content sites such as HubSpot and Sales Hacker and was actually nominated this year as a top 50 software as a service sales leader in the UK by Sales Confidence. Um, Rich is passionate about fixing broken mindset to sales coaching and helping salespeople become the very best they possibly can be. Richard, thanks so much for joining. How's it going, man? It's a privilege in these uh, strange uh, times of isolation. Um, it has allowed us to get to know each other a bit more over the past couple of weeks, Sam. Uh, so, yeah, good to, uh, good to be on your uh, seemingly very famous podcast uh, right now. So, it's, uh, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, man. No, definitely. That's something we can talk about later, actually. It's, it's, it's become really good, especially through the virus. How I've connected so many people I wouldn't have normally talked to on LinkedIn. But as we're forced to be inside, it's, it's just something that's happened as a part of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff we'd want to learn today over the next um, few 20, 30 minutes or so, Richard. We'd love to learn your story. So the key business events that have taken place from you leaving school up to getting where you are right now, um, founding Refract and what you've learned along the way. Um, mm -hmm. We'd love to learn your tips and strategies for winning at business, for how you maximize sales and how you maximize your business growth among the years. And along with that, we always like to take the angle of any digital marketing channels that you recommend that have worked for you and that you recommend anyone tuning in taps into. But if we could start with your story, Rich, um, if we could learn a bit more about where you grew up, how you got into the business world, and uh, yeah, if you could take it away, please do. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I was born and brought up in a um, relatively small town about uh, six miles outside of Newcastle. Um, went to university uh, in Liverpool. That was way back now in 2005. Um, just a sense check of how, how old I'm getting. Um <laughs> I actually did a degree at university in computer science because I was convinced that that was where my career was. It was in, you know, I was always quite interested in IT. Um, okay. Uh, realized that when I got to university that I actually wasn't as good at IT as I, as I thought I was. Um, actually hated uh, computer science. Um, oh, really? Actually, actually got a pretty mediocre degree as a result. Kind of just sort of grinded my way through three years of um, trying to pretend I was some kind of uh, computer programmer. And at the end of it, sort of realized, well, this isn't what I'm set to do in my, uh, my long-term my long career. And, and like many of us out there, seemingly just fell into a, um, a career in sales without ever really giving a, uh, sales a, a bit of thought as to something I would likely do uh, at all. Uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's how it happened. That's where I am today. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's surprising how many people I've actually spoke to ri lately, Rich, that have come from a tech background or that have started in tech. Um, I was actually speaking to the CEO of um, Cognizant, James, and he, he went from working on tech share platforms up to sales yeah. and back into tech and back but there's a lot of guys I've, and ladies too that i've spoken to that have come from tech backgrounds and moved into it so okay you started that you did that in um for a few years and then you got into a sales role did you rich yeah so uh i uh got into sales through a company called pareto uh law who many might be familiar with oh, okay. they're, they're basically uh one of the leading or if not the leading um recruitment agencies for uh, graduates coming into the world of sales, uh, so you know, people who do who don't know, normally don't necessarily sorry have sales experience, but have the I guess the DNA to potentially do well in sales. So um, they helped me find my first job working for a software company in the northeast. Uh, I started life as an SDR, um, pretty much just cold calling, cold email, and prospects, trying to book meetings for. Um, uh, sales consultants, as they were called then, basically um, field-based sales reps. Yeah, uh, okay. And I think uh, that you know that's where that's where my sales journey started. You know, kind of 
developed and progressed up the ranks um, from Was there that. any lessons that you learned doing that, Rich, and how long did you do that for? Yeah, uh, big big lessons, really. Uh, I think a lot of the inspiration from that really fueled the um, the creation of Refract in many ways in those very okay. early days of, of, of prospecting where uh, I, I, like many salespeople starting in sales, didn't really get any help or support or education on how to you know how to do a cold call what 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 is the process to go through um it was just kind of here's a here's a desk phone um here's here's a database of people you know call them up and see if you can see if you can book a meeting and uh, to be honest the lessons i learned were were, were, were stark you know i just kind of winged it really for, for yep. so long Makes sense. managed to get managed to get by managed to get good results but i was i was undoubtedly far less successful than i than i could have been probably wasted about two years of my sales career to be honest by just making loads of mistakes and not having that expert support and guidance made probably far less money than I should have um, and, and there's some you know stark lessons in that uh, as, a, as a result got it so you're pretty much chucked in at a deep end not yeah. really given any training as most of us were in our first sales jobs I'm sure a lot of people could could relate to that and just just chucked in at the deep end and there you go start making calls I think I think the sad thing is is that that's that's still the case for so many right now you know, we've True. been doing these uh, webinars uh, the past sort of three weeks at Refract, called them Sales Prospect and Bootcamp webinars. And we've had, you know, some amazing kind of show-ups to that and get a lot of feedback privately afterwards um, from people who I think are just kind of fighting the same fight that I was going through, um, you know, all those, all those years ago, um, which kind of like bemuses me a bit more, uh, quite a lot more because there is so much content that's available now on LinkedIn, so much stuff that's freely being shared that probably 10 years ago, you probably had to pay for to go on a training course to find out. And it's so much, so accessible now. Um, so true. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's still people who seemingly aren't getting that support from their managers or their company um, and who are really just kind of grappling their way through sales um and I, I think also speaks to a lot about the kind of the still the level of unprofessionalism that exists in sales too where you know people are just still being thrown at the deep end and told to figure it out people aren't being kind of uh educated or qualified to do to do the role which is which is quite sad that's yeah that's a really good point rich and do you think there comes a level when the amount of the amount that you can put into training your team so if you're a business owner or a founder and you have a team of sales reps or even one or two sales reps, is there a balance between the amount of training you give them, but also the amount of development they put in their self? So whether they're listening to podcasts, whether they're consuming videos on YouTube or LinkedIn, whether they're reading blogs or they're reading hard copies of sales books. Mm. So is there a balance? Here's the stark, uh, stark reality. Um, the significant majority of people working in sales uh, invest next to nothing in, in relation to their own self personal development um, you know they they invest they invest more time you know practicing sport or practicing their musical instruments or practicing their singing or practicing their poker skills whatever whatever their hobbies and interests are they they, they, they invest ten times the amount of uh, in in doing that than in the actual thing that helps pay their bills that sets them up for a career that is the thing that really is the 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 the, the thing that fuels their livelihood um so that the, the the sad reality is there's there's the, the significant majority of salespeople just aren't doing any of that however there is a there is a minority of people who, who are actively doing that who are the people coming to our webinars who are the people who listen to podcasts who are the people who read books who are the people who um ask for help to to people that you know, are genuinely want, wanting to get better at what they do and, and massive kudos to, to, to those individuals. And um, yeah, you come back to your, your, your question, Sam. So many companies, um, you know, they, they, as a manager, as a manager of a sales team, you can only do so much. You know, you can't, you can't be expected to be the, the single source of um, support and development to anybody in that, uh, in that, um, in your team, they have to take accountability for themselves on top of the, the support that you give them. Got it. And that's, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And I'd, I'd certainly agree as it comes to a lot. Obviously you can, you can give um, your sales reps the, the groundwork, the framework of, of how, how to do things and, and the right ways. But at the end of the, t of the day, if they're not going to invest in themselves, they're not going to get the desired results. They're not going to make as much money as they want to, and they're not going to progress as fast as they could. 100%. So, that's sound advice. Cool. So you're an SDR for, for a couple of years. Were you rich? What, what was the next step for you? 
so basically I figured out that people that I work with uh, who I was booking meetings for, I kind of suddenly started thinking when I, when I would I kind of overhear the demos that they were doing, if they were doing them online, I was thinking, I can do what they're doing. They're not doing anything <laughs> that, that, that special. They're getting paid 15, 20 grand more than I am. Um, so I thought, sod it. I'm going to, you know, some of the kind of smaller opportunities I was creating, I actually just started taking them for myself and not really telling anybody to do, that I was doing it. <laughs> um, and I was doing like my own demos, just, just kind of replicating what they were doing, which in hindsight was not the best, <laughs> but I would started doing it, started actually getting a bit of success, closing, you know, smaller deals it, it, back then. Nice. Um, and I think that was then recognized by my, uh, my boss at the time. He was my, now still my boss in my, at Refract. Uh, um, okay. uh, and I think he said, you know, fair enough, Rich, you're proving that you're proving that you can do this. Um, and you know, I, I kind of had that official promotion to being a, a sales consultant, uh, whatever that means. Uh, and basically, um, started, you know, create my own opportunities, selling, doing bigger deals, um, you know, became one of, if not the top performer in the, the sales team in that, in that team. Um, awesome, and then, uh, and yeah, that, that was kind of like, I worked for that company for five, six years. Um, and then at the, at the end of that, I was kind of looking for my next move, looking for my next challenge. And that's when the opportunity to, to get Refract off the ground uh, really, uh, really came about. Got it. And how did that work, Rich? As you're the co-founder, so were you in with another, another person? What was, the, what was the inspiration behind it? And when did the light bulb moment happen? Um, so I can't necessarily claim it was my idea, so to speak. However, um, it was heavily influenced by kind of the experiences that my boss the, the software company I was talking about, Kevin Beals, uh, who's now the, the you know, one of our co-founders and the CEO of, of, of Refract, he kind of came to me and said, "Rich, I know that you're looking for your next move. I've just sold, the, I've just sold the business. Here's what I'm thinking of doing next." Um, and you know, the kind of the idea and inspiration from when we talked it through was all through our, you know, my experiences and other salespeople's experiences of, of sales. So many people just trying to kind of figure it out as they go along. Um, yeah. Not enough managers invest in time coaching their sales people to become better um so many conversations that are happening in sales happening behind closed doors you know people are locking themselves in meeting rooms or um you know you never actually get to hear what top sales people do differently and yeah, yeah. Lo, lo and behold this was like a universal problem um so we kind of that's that's how the idea came about at the time it was just a sort of a you know 20 page word document product so brief did, did you want to make sales more transparent is that what you're saying rather than keeping things hidden or absolutely i mean you know this this kind of mentality of oh the, the best salesperson never shares their secrets and it's just kind of a you know uh, it, it's it's all about them winning i just think is nonsense to be honest i think what well, you know yeah. when um as a sales team you know you you succeed together um that's that's my my experiences I, i've experienced that refract that we all there's no kind of like uh there's no sort of arrogance or bullishness or people you know that when, when someone brings in a deal everyone celebrates um awesome Love and, and, I, and i think part of that is actually sharing what what's working for you because you know even if it's a key question that someone's asking on a sales call that seems to be working really well share that across everybody else because if you share what you're doing people are going to share back and start to so, put, put this thing together really nice tip rich and no like you say we've, i'm sure most of us have been in toxic environments where there's there's a sales guy or sales girl that's just smashing it and closing all these deals and they're doing really well and they're like you're asking for their help and they're like well i'm not going to tell you because that's the secret sauce or that's the secret recipe yeah yeah done it. like, well here's the, here's, the, here's the here's the problem is that um most sales teams out there the lion's share of the revenue is being brought in by one or two people in the team. And that's the kind of the problem that so many organizations are trying to fix. It's like, I'm paying, I'm paying 10 salaries, yet only two people are really bringing in the lion's share of the business. What are they, what are they doing differently? They're, they're speaking of the same prospects that everyone else is speaking to. They're selling the same product. They're, they're, they're relatively speaking, following the same sales process. What are they doing differently when they start speaking with a, a prospect that makes them have you know, 5x, 10x the success? Um, so, you know, companies need to start to share and expose what that, what, what those people are doing differently and trying to replicate some of that in, in their kind of middle pack or lower performers. 
Great stuff. And would you say that's the main kind of secret to your success, um, Rich, in terms of keeping transparent, in terms of all your team sharing ideas when they've had wins, they've had wins together. Has there been any other strategies or any other ways that you've driven business forward and been able to expand at the rate that your company has? Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely a part of it. It's like, it's definitely around understanding that sales is largely a science. It's not this kind of art that people go on about. You know, it's not like people, people talk about art. It's like, Oh, this this salesperson's got the gift of the gab. He, you know, he he he's cheeky with with customers. It's like that's no, nobody buys Such that shit anymore. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but still, there is a lot of people who 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 do believe that. Like, oh, you know, he, he builds great rapport with 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 people. I just think, what does that even mean? It's like it's actually, fun. yeah, it's kind of like the re- the reason he has more success is he's more consistent. He asks better questions. He's a better listener. He. He, qualify, he spends time with the with the right prospects and doesn't spend time with the wrong prospects. Um, he you know he he follows a sales process that has been statistically proven to be to work over time. It's data driven, um, and and that's kind of I think one of the reasons that you know one of the the kind of the mantras that I followed. I think on top of that, um, big part of my success in sales is, is I think um, I have to put it down to. Uh, I have to put it down to work rate. I, 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 I do. And people, you know, a lot of people talk today about, um, oh, you know, this kind of um, uh, sort of people who brag about how much they work and it's not, it's not, it's not about that. And I, I kind of do, on one hand, I agree with them. People who brag about how much they work is like, yeah, okay, loads of people work hard. But I do genuinely believe that people who work hardest, most consistently tend to get better results than those who don't. Um, and I do think my work ethic and um, seeing sales is not like a nine to five job. It's like I'm constantly switched on and yeah, okay, so that, true, that, that, that has its flaws. Honestly, honestly I know I, I've got a bit of a bias because I'm in a digital business, but the amount of big deals that I've closed outside of nine to five, be it on a call, be it on an email, be it sitting on the toilet even outside yeah, yeah. of work. And yeah, that's, that's when they come in. So like you say, doing putting in the extra work, I mean, my my uh, fiance will have a go at me because I'm, I'm nearly always doing work. So um, yeah, I completely yeah. agree. Like if you put the extra work in, as long as it's doing the right stuff, it does get a result. Well, we were talking about this in my company just this week. Um, got a guy called John. He's, he's a young lad. Um, I think he's 19, 20 years old. He's an SDR. And um, he kind of does remind me a little bit of myself when I was doing that job in that he is on it at all times. Like he gets an email from a prospect response at like 8.30 about suggesting a time to speak the next day for a meeting or a, a discovery call. And he's on it responding. He, he knows that his chance to lock down that meeting is right there and then. If he puts that off till tomorrow, that prospect is immediately that bit more disengaged. And he knows that he, he uses this to his, to, his, to his advantage where he is just constantly on it because he knows that you know, if he works hard, if he responds quicker, if he puts the effort in, the, the results speak for themselves and they do. You know, he, he, he puts in the most meetings. He, he, he create, he generates the most commission in the, in, 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 in that team. And it's, and it's not, um, it's not necessarily to do with his skill set. It's his work ethic and his drive. And you, sometimes you can't yeah, teach that. I mean, it's quite, quite interesting actually, because I've worked with companies or I've partnered with companies whereby they'll get an inbound lead. So they might get a, a, an inbound lead on email and they might forward it to their sales team or their new business developer a day later, two days later, three days yeah. later. I mean, if I get an inbound lead, luckily they go straight to me. I can hop on it straight away. So if it's nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, I'm probably still awake. I'll respond to them within a few minutes, book the call for the next day, or I'll start asking questions. So I'm lucky. But when business owners don't send the leads to their sales reps until 24 hours later, I mean, response is key. And there are stats that, that back up that response yeah, yeah. rates improve conversion rates. Um, so what do you think about that, Rich, when organizations are sending leads like days later? I mean, it sounds mental to me. It's, it's bonkers, Sam. I mean, I, I, uh, vanilla, it was Vanilla Soft I actually saw did a, a presentation on this um, around uh, they, they analyzed like lead response time and how like the optimum time to respond to a lead and I think was within 15 minutes of it coming in. And I think when you, when you kind of, it goes beyond that 15 minutes, the, um, the uh, percentage of uh rate of success just dwindles really significantly yeah. so when you're talking about 24 hours later it's like your, your your chances of converting that lead are are slim to none depending on i guess the the quality exactly. of the of that lead um this is why and i don't necessarily think 
I, I think technology is there to help companies with this problem, but this is why maybe it's not something that can be solved by the company. It's solved by the, um, the individuals, the people who are prepared to, okay, leads came through on the website. It is 8 p.m. right now. Um, I'm watching TV. Um, I could just wait until tomorrow morning. Oh, I could actually respond to this right now because now is the chance to convert that. Again, you need the right people with the right work ethic, with the right mentality, exactly. with the right without right drive uh, to 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 deal with that. And again, that's not something that can be taught. People are just people are born with that, and people are grown up, and people have motivations that give them that drive. Whereas there's a lot of people that just don't have it. Exactly. I think you're, you've hit the nail on the head, really, Richard. You've got to have your or your team have got to have that appetite to yeah. want to serve their customers, to want to help themselves financially. Because if, if they're working on leads quickly, if they're responding to leads quickly, that's going to improve their conversion rate. Yep. Thus, includes the, improve their close rate and aka make them more cash in the bank. So yeah, it's got, it's got to be a combination, hasn't it? Cool. Well, that's, that's interesting to talk about. Um, all right, Rich. So yeah, in terms of that sort of things, um, we do like to take the angle on the show of, of digital marketing strategies. So have, have there been any digital strategies that you guys at Refract have invested in that have helped you at all? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> since we brought on board Matt, our marketing manager, a couple of years ago, I've, uh, and he would hopefully attest to this, I became really just interested and fascinated by what he does on digital marketing and definitely just got, I feel like that's an area of my skill set that I've, I've been able to develop by just being really curious and about, because I see the direct impact it, it can have on, on my team. Um, right. So I think, first of all, we've, um, you know, we, one of our best lead sources that we've had over the past couple of um, couple of years is uh, an ebook called the Sales Coaching Handbook, and you know we get a consistent, even even to this day, a consistent number of downloads of that book. Um, and I think what that taught me is, first of all, the actual book itself and the content in the book is almost a bit irrelevant. Um, whereas I think people might put so much so much kind of thought and effort into creating the perfect piece of like a perfect lead magnet that, that people can download. And it has to be, you know, they go through 20 different versions and and actually it doesn't really matter because ultimately what is the purpose of the lead magnet? It's to get people to download it. So people to show a level of interest or intent in what you do as a business. That's it. Because the majority sure. of people who download that lead magnet won't even read the lead magnet. That's the stock called hard reality. So all those people there who are spending, you know, uh, 10 weeks putting together this amazing uh, PDF, the majority of people who download that aren't, aren't reading it. That's not the most important thing. It's the fact that people have decided to download it in the first place is the key thing. So um, we've seen that work really well because, and again, people are downloading that not because it's an advert for Refract. They would download that and still not even have a clue what Refract do. It's they've expressed an interest in something that we help with. So that's something that I've... Um, one thing that I think has worked really well for us is, is, is those lead magnets. Now we're looking at how we can scale those. Just to touch on that lead magnet, Rich, is that perhaps on a blog that ranks well on Google and then people click through to the blog when looking for sales training and then they read the ebook and then sign up and download it? Is that, is that how um, it so how, like that? Where, where we had most success with it before it had that kind of organic reach, which it, it sort of does now, is um, we made great use of LinkedIn um, paid in mails. Um, oh, okay. The reason they work so well for us is because uh, LinkedIn with that side of their, uh, yeah. So basically they're kind of, they're essentially automated in mails that get sp very highly targeted to your, uh, to your target audience. So for us, they're getting targeted at um, uh, sales leaders. So at direct VP level um, right. uh, working in companies of a specific size with a specific number of sales employees in specific yep, yep. geographies so you can get super super targeted who they whose inboxes they're landing in um sure. which which makes them again means that you can uh be confident that they're they're being they're, they're getting in front of the right eyeballs the people that you want them nice. to be looking at yeah, um, so sense. really really hi highly recommend people looking into that but over time um it's actually, we started getting, you know, the, the, the books became indexed. We're getting more traffic to the website. So, you know, and the organic Google position was going up as well. Cause a lot of exactly. Were, you know. Yeah. And yeah. is there, is there a certain way? Cause this is quite a tricky one. I've always found rich. Are you, um, people that download an ebook, are you putting them through a cadence like email, email streams and things like that? Or are you calling them straight away? Is there a certain way that people should be dealing with white paper downloads? Cause they're not the strongest of leads, but they're not the weakest of leads. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're kind of like, they're, 
they're sort of foot in the doors as I, I describe yeah, yeah. them. It's not somebody saying, I am interested in what you do as a business. It's I'm interested in maybe I've shown an interest in something that is connected with your business. Um, mm-hmm. Our philosophy here at Refract is that we take a phone first approach with anyone that downloads a lead magnet. Um, because if we just send them like email after email, that looks quite templated. It's probably going to look, I don't know. I just, I just feel like it's not, it, it doesn't get the same success, but we've had a lot of success in right. The first stage, someone downloads a sales coach in Hamburg. We get on the phone with that person. And so we, we typically pass those to our SDR team who will call them up as quick as possible. Um, and you know, they'll be leading the call with something like notice that you downloaded the sales coach in Hamburg, you know, what was it that prompted you to express an interest in sales coaching? So we're kind of trying to move them away from thinking about the book because if you said, oh, notice that you downloaded the book, um, what did you think of the book? The conversation becomes about the book. Oh, I haven't had the chance to read it yet. I can't remember getting the PDF. Um, I'm going to read it in my own time. Whereas that's not the conversation that you should be having. It's what prompted you about sales coaching, i.e. the thing that that book was about. What what, what prompted you to download it today? Um, that conversation is, oh, actually, well, uh, it's something I've been given a lot of thought to. You know, we've got this initiative in the business centered around coaching, um, something that we, you know, we talk a lot about internally. All right, okay, interesting. Tell me more about that. And suddenly, you've got the conversation away from the book, which is the important thing. <laughs> it's all about gu- guiding them into understanding if this person's a good fit for your company. Yeah, working out the why. That's really good, Rich. Love that. Okay, cool. Um, and was there any other strategies that you guys have had success with? Yeah, well, if I uh, talk on a, on a personal level, um, over the last twelve to eighteen months, I've just, you know, much like you, much like yourself, recognised the the importance of um, and the exposure that LinkedIn can provide on a, on a personal level, and how that feeds into my sales team as well. You know, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I kind of, you know, made a solid commitment when I saw these people posting content, getting good traction. I was thinking, I've got, I could do what they're doing. Um, uh, and I can see how over time playing a long game, this is going to help benefit from a, a lead source, from a, 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 a network, from a, an exposure perspective. So, you know, I just started posting content around sales that I know would resonate with my, I, you know, my ideal customer profile. Um, and it was all, it's, it's all from my own experiences. It's like, you know, I talk about the, the demo that I had yesterday, I talk about the sales experience I had last week when I was being sold to and, you know, I, over time, I you know, the first post I was putting out, I was getting, you know, two or three likes and two or three comments. And I think for a lot of people, that's where they sort of give up. Um, yeah. But I just consistently did it. I got better at writing those posts. You know, my, my actual creativity and even just the, 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 the actual quality of the content, I found I was getting better and better the more I was doing it, like anything in life. Um, and, you know, it, lo and behold, it leads to things like this. It leads to Sam inviting me on his podcast. It leads to people with other high followers, you know, getting you involved. It leads to people wanting you to speak at events. And um, that's not me saying that I'm the greatest salesperson in the world. It's saying that I'm talking about stuff that is clearly being seen as valuable. Um, what that leads to is it gets, you know, refract ultimately more aware, uh, more aware um, and I think interesting conversation I had recently, uh, Sam, with a couple of my guys on my team. They said, yeah, Rich, sure. where, 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 do you, where do you get a lot of your meetings from? Like, you, you, know, you still close a lot of business yourself. Where do you get your meetings from? Because um, I haven't got, like, SDRs putting meetings on for me. And I said, well, if I'm being brutally honest, whilst I'm a big proponent of, you know, making cold calls and all, all the rest of it, I still do that stuff, by the way. I said, so many of my opportunities now just come through my network. It's people who, you know. Dude, same here. <laughs> uh, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's like it is it's people who you know um eight months ago started following me and now they're ready for the conversation and it's uh and that's the it's, that's the that's the kind of uh, the, the thing I, yeah, think you... I mean it's really interesting because like we were saying on the webinar the other day um with benjamin Dennehy, the uk's most hated sales trainer um <laughs> he used to he used to bash out the cold calls but even admitted a lot of his inbound now comes from linkedin yeah. <laughs> as much as he as much as he hated to say it He's filling yeah, up almost yeah. all his appointments from LinkedIn. So it shows how powerful it is. But like you said, a lot of our regular tuners in will understand that it's all about the long game. Um, but I do like the tip you gave about using your personal experiences in your posts. Because I yeah. found some of, some of those that I've put out have actually got the best reach in terms of organic views, likes, 100%. comments, and then led to inbound inquiries. People, so. people relate best to stories, real life stories. 
Um, people relate back to things that are maybe a little bit provocative because it, 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 it shows that you're not just a vanilla person, that you have got an opinion. Um, but yeah, my best, my best posts literally come from real life experiences, literally like, oh, you know, the call I had yesterday or the demo that went dreadful last week. And, you know, it's, it's, that's the stuff that it's real. People can relate to it. Yeah. And I think it's quite important, Rich, I don't know if you agree with me, to let your um, sales reps, I mean, I don't have a massive team here at WebChoice, but I think it's important to let your team be able to post what they want on LinkedIn rather than controlling it. Because um, like you say, LinkedIn is about building a personal brand and relating to your own stories, which people can then relate to, start to like you over time. And then yeah. that but would you agree or would you say it needs to be controlled? Because I know for larger scales and enterprise, it's going to be difficult. Cause they're not going to be wanting certain things well, to happen. Rumor has it, so this is just rumor, by the way. But one of our okay. main, one of our main competitors apparently has uh, banned their salespeople posting content because they want all the content to be coming from their own company account. Which I think worst idea bit, ever. I think I think it's a bit bizarre. And the reason I say that is, how many company accounts do you follow on LinkedIn? Very Probably very little. How many like who posts the, the most interesting content? It's the actual individuals. So if people are in, if people are more interested in the individuals, then you're gonna the, the company is gonna get the knock-on benefit for that eventually. Eventually, if 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 you know if they're if especially if they're on the sales or marketing team, so um, it's just a bizarre bizarre um, just very kind of draconian um, mentality to have. I'd say I, I think I think to your point, um, I think within reason people should have the freedom to 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 post what they what they like as long as it's not. Um, overtly offensive, or yeah. um, you know, any, anything like that, that that would kind of maybe paint your employer in a in a bad light. Because I think ultimately they're the ones that are paying your your salary. But um, yeah, I think I think people should have the freedom. This is their this is their LinkedIn profiles. It's the, the thing that they're going to have in their current company and the next company and, and beyond. They should have the freedom to express and and people Agreed. people warm to people and the the real uh, and their and their personality and their feelings more than you know the, the the kind of generic post being chucked out by a company linkedin profile so that's my that's my thoughts i encourage my my sales team to do it some of them don't do it some of them have started to do it more a lot of them are like you know i think still kind of un, trying to figure out the benefit of doing it but you know it's not it's not for everyone is it no it's not for everyone but i mean the, the, the tools there and i think that's good maybe yep. Companies can just say to their staff, "Look, here's a guideline. Don't be swe- don't swear. Don't be offensive. That's pretty much it. Apart yeah. from that, crack on. And um, if you want to, if you want to tap into it, fine. If you don't, then fair 100%. enough. Cool. Okay, mate. Um, so, are there any particular highs and lows that you've had since founding Refract that you can share with us? Well, me and my CEO always say this to each other. Um, you know, we still classify ourselves as a startup when. Yeah, it's debatable whether we are or not. Um, we're still a relatively young company. Um, it is like a roller coaster in this world. Um, it is like you know, week to week, month to month. You can feel so insanely different. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to make you swing the other way around. Um, so I think just the the highs and lows are, are just are just constant. And you know, like <laughs> I think everybody's experienced that, particularly over the last. Um, last couple of weeks is and from our perspective there'll be some people who have just faced lows in the past two weeks and you know my, my heart does genuinely go out to, to, to those people uh because it is just very just tough weird times um from a refract point of view you know it's it's been it's been that roller coaster in the past two weeks you know we've 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 had a tough we've had deals not closed because of COVID-19 we've had customers who you know we've we've lost because of uh you know they've got rid of their sales team or they don't you know they're they're insert themselves but we've also signed customers up because of what we do um kind of they have more of a pressing need for what we do now than ever before um on a kind of a more macro level taking it beyond uh just the current uh climate i think um i think you know one thing that we're we're not blessed with as a as a business and what we do is that it's not as if like everybody out there in the world is searching for a conversation intelligence platform you know very few people are, are actually looking for what we do very few people are aware of, of, of this tech versus i don't know like a crm or an email automation platform or you know tech that's been around and, and very established so um you know 80 percent of what we do as a business is still completely outbound 
driven um, versus you know the twenty percent that we get we get from inbound leads. So on that basis, you know it's not. I think we we, we have to work hard for our deals. We have to work hard for sales. Um, uh, it's it's not as, it's it's not like we're blessed with coming into the office on a Monday and ten people have booked demos over the weekend on the website. Um, so on that basis, it's like that's that's the constant battle that we face of you know, and that's why we have to be really good at what we do in my team. We have to do good discovery. We have to make people aware of problems and pains and challenges that they, yeah. don't, they don't think they've got. And on that note, Rich, um, we're coming close to time. But have you got any specific tips for hiring sales staff? There's something I sometimes like to ask sales leaders. Is there any any best practices on hiring the sales staff that you could? Yeah, I um, think for me uh, that's worked really well is I'm amazed at how many companies don't actually practically assess their sales the sales people they interview. So many people, you know, they interview sales people and they say, oh, they they interviewed really well you know they're in sales they probably did they probably you know they, they they're probably good at holding a conversation probably good at asking questions well some of them are anyway um but how many of them actually actually assess the skills that they've got very very few so what we do in our uh in my interviews is we'll we'll do if we're, for example a recorded role play discovery call with somebody where we'll do it we'll, we'll actually have the call we'll you know we'll, we'll get them to kind of do a discovery selling the, the product that they're, they're currently selling on their previous employment we'll record that in our platform as well um and you know we'll we'll kind of we'll play the part of the customer and afterwards we'll ask them how they thought it went you know we'll give them feedback we'll see how they how they react to feedback and, and coaching that we give them for some of them that's quite a kind of weeds out the people who think they know it all i've been doing sales for 15 yep. years you know i i and it can often oftentimes they they don't react well to the feedback we give them and in some cases that suggests that they're probably not a good fit for the company um but it also gives us an insight into how, well what does this person actually sound like when they're selling you know how many employers who are hiring salespeople actually actually measure how that salesperson sell but think of all the other jobs professions you hire a marketer you'll ask them to bring examples of their you know the work that they've done or the, uh, or the projects they were involved in you hire a developer you want to you know you'll make my test their yeah, coding, coding of skills work, exactly websites whatever how many people how many companies do that in sales it's actually bonkers so you've so got to, you've got to create practical activities to measure um if not the skill set of the salesperson but also how they respond to coaching feedback how you know what what's their what's their openness to actually develop that's an awesome tip. No, that's, that's exactly like you say. So many salespeople can just blag their way through at an interview. Just yep. say, yeah, what did you sell at your last company? Make up random figure. I'm going to yep. sound like I'm, I, I know what I, I'm doing. I'm a jack of all trades. So they can just blag it through, gets to the crunch, and they just don't hit their target month by month. And it's like, why did I ever have to hire this sales rep? So yeah, that's, that's a great piece of advice for any business owners listening. Actually get them on the phones or pack, yep. pack this dummy environments with them and see how they perform. And if 100%. Another one that uh, Costas Perk has actually recommended to me, which I think, uh, <laughs> um, uh, fair play, I think this is a really good idea, is for, uh, he'll actually get the salesperson, prospective uh, new hire, to actually sit with um, the sales team for, say, half a day. Of course, it takes a, that takes a commitment from the salesperson to offer that time up, but if they're serious about the opportunity, then, they, then, they, then they'll do that. Yep. And it'll give, give them a chance to just be kind of tune in to what that culture is like to see what the the, the job they're going to be doing is like to, to vote for also the people who are already in the team to kind of see how well that person fits in with them as well so i, I really like that idea and some that i'm you know keen to kind of embrace myself yeah you know move nice forward. approach i like it okay all right rich and are there any particular habits that you recommend um that people have is there any habits that you have that have, have helped with your success um always the night before um, from a prospecting point of view, get at least five people that you want to prospect in the morning after. You know, lying, lying in bed, everyone's pissing about on the phones at, in, before they, they turn the lights off. Find five people you want to call the next the next morning. You know, do that, do that, and do that in fifteen twenty minutes. It's fifteen twenty minutes that you can actually spend actually prospecting versus trying to do that the next morning and wasting wasting time. Just get in the habit of doing that. Five people every night, five days a week. You know, that's you basically. It's it's time that you're just gonna you'll be spent pissing about on your phone anyway. It's gonna it's gonna you know you, you you can get one meeting out of those 
twenty uh, out of those twenty five people that you that you prospect easy um, in that in that week. Um, secondly, I think another uh, another habit is maybe this is for people who um, have a sales team who are listening to this is invest time coaching your salespeople. And I know that sounds so obvious, but there's so many people who aren't doing it. And here's an easy way to do it if you feel like you haven't got the time or you haven't got the experience to do it. Friday morning, this is what we do at Refract. 8.30, we get some nice coffees in for everybody. Um, and we get everybody in a room and we pick a, one or two sales calls that took place during the week. We play them out on the big screen, on the speakers to everybody in the room. And we literally, uh, one of us acts as conductor, say it's me. I'll just stop and start, the, you know, stop and start the call and ask the team, what, what are we, what are we hearing here? What do you think of how Mark asked this question? What, what, what are we, what have we learned about what the prospect said so far? Any risks so far? We're ten minutes in this call. Any risks? Do you think we should be aware of? Just what happens is the entire team just starts giving their opinion, starts debating amongst each other. You are coaching at scale by doing that because you're it's like a group learning session kind of thing. Yeah. And, and it's amazing at the end of that call, how many people come out of it with a spring in their steps in. I can't wait to try some of that stuff out. Um, why companies nationwide aren't doing this with their sales team? I don't know because we're all selling the same people. We're all selling the same product. It's like the optimum time to listen about how someone else in the team's doing it and to, and to start to, try and get better what we do do it half eight takes an hour uh and uh, such a small investment of time that i guarantee will pay off in the long run it will pay off in the short short run as well people will take away one thing one question that was asked in that sales call that had a good response they will try and use that question that same day with their own prospects make it a regular habit awesome rich and i really love the um the one that you're talking about especially if you're lying in bed because everyone's on their phone aren't they or they're watching tv or they're doing something just find yeah, yeah. five people that you want to speak to the next day. Just do it on LinkedIn, if anywhere. And it doesn't yeah. matter who it is. So in my case, it might be marketing directors or sales directors I want to speak to, or head of sales, head of marketing. Find them. Find, make sure they hit, hit your ideal customer. Mark them down on a spreadsheet wherever and then give them a shout the next yeah. day or reach out to them the next day. That's awesome. Too. I've, I've really, also really started good. doing, for those who are kind of wanting to get more active and post some content on LinkedIn, I just, start, I just got like a little, on my notepad app uh, on my iPhone, just putting across like just the little, uh, headline topics of uh, LinkedIn posts I want to put out that week so that I'm not getting up on a Tuesday morning thinking oh what's you know what was I going to post about is I've just got like I'm just constantly adding to it just you know got a new idea whack it on there I've got a big long list and I'm just cherry picking which one I want to do every morning I love that as well I need to start doing that every now and then I get if I'm walking the dog or something I get an idea in my head and then just like you I'll just put it on the notepad app and I'll, say, yep. I'll, I'll post it on LinkedIn tomorrow that way you don't forget exactly. it so yeah, taking yep. notes is a really nice, nice piece of advice. Awesome, Richard. Um, well, yeah, it's been it's been great to chat. We've learned your story. Um, been listening to Sam's Business Growth Show, where we sit down with business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from across the globe. We learn their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and their exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your own business. Um, the show is sponsored by WebChoiceUK.com, helping businesses skyrocket their leads, sales, and brand positioning via results-driven digital marketing. SEO, conversion-focused web design, and mobile apps. That's webchoiceuk.com. Rich, just before we wrap this up, let us know the best way people can reach out to you. Tell us a bit more about your company and the best way to get in touch. Yeah, so um, my company is Refract, www.refract.ai. Uh, we provide technology which uh, is with the end goal of helping people have better conversations with their customers and prospects. Uh, which 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 will lead them to have better better sales results. So we're just unlocking the the kind of the black box of intelligence in those conversations um, to to help people have more success uh, when 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 selling. Um, so check us out. Uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Search a rich uh, Richard Smith Refract. Um, you'll be able to find me. Connect with me on there, and that's the best way to yeah you know, ask any questions that you might have on anything that you've learned today. Awesome, dude. I forgot one thing. I like to ask if you could thank just one person, either dead or alive, having a positive influence on yourself and your career, who would that be and why? Cool. Um, I, I have to thank, my, uh, and this isn't me trying to get a pay rise, I have to thank my, my CEO, Kevin. Um, <laughs> and yeah, he, he, has, he has been a, a very positive influence in, um, in me and kind of, I, I believe, helping me accelerate like 
where I've got to um, in, in, in sales. And, uh, you know, he, he's been a, a big influence in, in kind of business and, and me, you know, trying to, uh, trying to fight the good fight and, 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 uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I am, uh, where, what I'm doing now w- without his uh, support. So, um, yeah. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Rich. Subscribe today for more digital marketing, sales, and business growth tips from the experts.